We're getting close to Shavuos, and there was somebody who his yurt site, the day that he went up to heaven, is on Shavuos. You might know some of the famous souls who went up to heaven on Shavuos, namely King David. That's right. The Baal Shem Tov, the Holy Baal Shem Tov. But there's someone else today that I want to discuss, and his story is very profound, and will give us an insight about what it means to search after truth, and what it means to be someone who understands that we came to this world to seek truth, and we'll stop at nothing until we have that. And of course, that is someone who is known as Valentin Patotsky, who later became what's called the Ger Tzedek, the holy convert, who took on the name Avram ben Avram. Avram ben Avram. I was recently in Poland, and we went to the Ptotsky family. They were the, the, the noble family, like serious wealth, nobility, Polish nobility, like, like the Duke of Poland. And one of their sons, Valentin, went on a journey. And they were not uh, observing Torah law, but he started to learn Torah. He started to learn what we call the Chumash. And he noticed that people had very tremendous explanations of the Chumash, very deep and profound explanations of the five books of Moses, which was given to Klal Yisrael on Har Sinai, and we're going to receive once again in a couple days. And he went on this journey. Now, he was killed, al Kiddush Hashem, and we'll get to that in a moment. He was burned at the stake on Shavuos. But let's go through some of the journey that he went on. Now, you could imagine when he was in the process of converting, it wasn't such uh, a good look for his family. They were not so excited about this. He was, he was nobility. He was royalty. And it was prohibited, according to law, to convert in Poland. Things have changed since then, but it was punishable by death. Now, this person was particularly close to the Vilna Goin as well, as we'll see. And the Gerd Sedek went through the process. He was guided to go to Amsterdam where he could convert. And he went on that journey and he became a Jew. He became a Jew. And he left all the wealth. And he knew that he'd be giving up everything. He had the wealth of you know, kings waiting for him. But if he became a Jew, he would lose it all. And they asked him, why, you know, why are you doing this? Just stay a wealthy person. So there's a few things in the depth of the story that illustrate why he decided that he wanted to convert. One of the things that we have in an unbroken chain of transmission is that on Shabbos, one thing that touched him was the Zmiris of Shabbos that he heard the singing that goes on, the beautiful songs, of songs to God in the home of Klal Yisrael, singing to God and singing about the beautiful Shabbos Kodesh, moved him. He also said that anybody know the smell when your oil candles just go out? Know that like the bubble and and it's just a little bit of like a, like a latka, whatever, like a, like a fried oil just a, a slight, there's like a slight, he said that feeling, the enjoyment of that is more than of Shabbos, the candles, that final moment of just that light of Shabbos, of, of, after all the pleasure of the light, that even that little of the Shabbos candles is more than all the wealth that I have. And the Lelava Rebbe would say that in the olden days, the Jews loved Shabbos so much that even the smallest pleasure of Shabbos was like unbelievable. Now imagine the real pleasures. Actually, the lights, the candlelit romantic dinner with your wife and kids and guests, the beautiful food, delicious, the company, the song, the 
the celebration. So that's the smallest of the pleasures. Now, the Gert Sedek knew who reported him. It's quite a long story about all the details of how he was hiding out. He sought advice from the Vilna Goyen, where to hide, how to hide. And he essentially dressed up as a Yid, and, I mean he was. And he just sat in a shul and he was reported and given to the authorities because the family didn't know where he went. They didn't know where he went. So he was sitting in shul, he was turned over to the authorities, and his family begged him, just renounce being a Jew, just say that you don't want to be a Jew. We'll build you a palace and you could just sit and learn Torah all day, just don't make it a bad look for the family. He said, I will not. And he was asked, is he going to take revenge on this person, not in this world, but in the next world? Well, this person who turned you in, maybe you should go take revenge on them. So he said, I'm not going to take revenge. He said, if I'm not going to take revenge in this world, I'm certainly not going to take revenge in the next world. Now, what was the Kalva Chaimer? What was he making? What was the logical point he was making? If I'm not going to take revenge in this world, certainly in the world to come, I'm not going to take revenge. So he said, let me give you an analogy, a moshul, lama He said, imagine you had a prince. And the prince, he was a little boy. And he was making a sandcastle. And you know what happens? Somebody came along and broke the guy's sandcastle. And he runs over to his father. Father! This tragic travesty! My sand castle's broken. And the father, like, didn't go over and, like, destroy the guy. Even though the son felt that he really should. Do you know the travesty that was just done? My sand castle was kicked. And later, and, this, and, this, and the prince thought, you know, I'm going to grow up. I'll be the king one day. I'll seek my revenge. And sure enough, what happened, my friends? He did become the king. And he totally forgot about the whole sandcastle thing. It was okay. It was just a sandcastle. So the Ger Tzedek said, I'm going to come up to Shemayim, and I'm going to look down here, and I'm going to realize it was less just a, you know, a sandcastle that they destroyed. So if down here, it's just a sandcastle. Certainly when I get up there, and I have a much bigger wisdom of what's happening, and then I know that Hashem has a big plan here, I think I'm going to do something? Now, the Vilna Goin said that he could have saved the Gert Tzedek. The Vilna Goin was very deeply connected to him, as we'll see at, towards the end. He had a very deep spiritual connection to the Gert Tzedek, Avram ben Avram. And he could have saved him using Shemus. Shemus means using the different names of Hashem, and he could have saved him. And he asked the Gert Tzedek, he said, do you want me to save you? I could save your life. And he said, no, I want to die, Al Kiddush Hashem. Uh, it's the time, and I will die, Al Kiddush Hashem. Now, when everyone was getting ready for his death, there were Jews that actually were able to go. One in particular that was there was the Yusoid V'Shoir Shavoyda, one of the great, great rabbis of the 1700s. You should go and find his Sefer. Yesoid V'Shoir Shavayda, an amazing sefer on Kabbalah and how to live a Torah life and everything with depth and all the mitzvahs with tremendous simcha. The whole sefer is amazing, mind-boggling how good it is. And he knew everything, all the secrets. And he snuck in to the crowd because he wanted to say Amen to the bracha that the Ger Tzedek was going to make, Asher Kiddushan B'mitzvois Avitzivanu. Al Mesiris Nefesh, on the Mesiris Nefesh of dying, Al Kiddush Hashem, he wanted to make an Amen to that bracha, which was also Mesiris Nefesh for him, because if he was caught there in this, at the burning of the stake, he would also be burned. He was one of the big rabbis. And they didn't like that, that he was trying to share goodness and truth with the world. And he did say Amen. And the Vilna Goyen said if 10 Jews would have been there, 
If 10 people would have said Amen to his bracha, Mashiach would have come like that. It was that big of a moment. It was that big of a moment if 10 people would have said Amen at that moment, Mashiach would have come. And Rav Shloyme Zaman Arabach heard Ishmi Pi Ish. Ishmi Pi Ish means from his Rebbe's, 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 Rebbe, nonstop. And all of their Rebbe's heard from their Rebbe's. You have an unbroken chain going all the way back to the Vilna Goyen that said that at that moment a great fire came out from Mara Samach Pela, which according to our tradition is one of the entrances to Gan Eden, to the Garden of Eden, Mara Samach Pela. And this fire came out and it burned up all the clippers, it burned up all the forces of negativity in the world. Some understand in halacha that that means that there's not even problems anymore of doing negovasar not beside your bed because evil forces ran away from the world when the Ger Tzedek made that bracha. And if 10 people would have said Amen, immediately Mashiach would have come. So the Ger Tzedek was from this great, great place that his soul was deeply, deeply connected to Torah and had to make its way home. And Rav Nachman speaks in Lakut Maran, Kedai to go look at it, Lakut Maran Yud Dalid, that a person should learn Torah. You should learn the Torah for the sake of learning Torah, not for other motivations. And where should you take this Torah? Where should the Torah bring you back to? El You should learn the Torah until the Torah arrives at the root of your soul. And that you're learning a Torah that touches you in the core of who you are and moves the essence of who you are. Sha'al deze magia ha'ara And by doing that, when you actually arrive back by learning Torah that touches the root of you, the core, the deep core of who you are, it brings this great light, Lepoisha Yisrael, Shemishoyrish Nishmasai. It helps those that have gone away, that are lost, that are connected to your root soul, anybody, so to speak, with your DNA, if you will, deeply connected to your spiritual DNA, if you learn the Torah and it's connected to your root soul, those that are also connected to your root soul, yes, there's people that are connected to us. That's why you feel certain vibes with certain people. Now, why do you like hanging out with this person as opposed to this person? They both live in your town. They're both very nice people, but you just feel more connected to this person. There's such a thing called shayrish neshama because your souls are connected at a core root level. And different people have different connections to different people. So what if some of the people that are connected to your root soul level have gone off Hashem Yirachim and are lost in different places? Then what happens when you learn Torah at your core soul? You bring light to other people that are connected to your core soul. Umachzer oisim b'tshuva ali And you help other people do tshuva. And therefore, the tzaddikim say that the Vilna Goyen, of course, he was learning Torah at a very deep core soul level. And whose soul was he connected to? Valentin Ptotsky's. He was connected to the Ger Tzedek's soul. And as he was learning, it was stirring within Valentin this feeling of returning, of going to seek the larger story, even though he had a very lavish, wonderful life, but he felt something moving inside of him, like many converts who feel that there's something moving inside of them and they're being pulled in a certain direction. And as the Vilna Goyen was learning these Torahs, it started to awaken his soul, like Rabbi Nachman has explained to us. Shechein haya eitzel agra, she'ali dea Torah l'shma shalom ad agra, 
He aroused the soul of the Ger, and that's why afterwards he spent so much time also with the Vilna Goin. He was a great student of the Vilna Goin. And it aroused him to make that journey of converting. And on the crest of the Pototsky family, you could see there's something missing. Something is missing from that. They weren't exactly so happy that Valentin did what he did. He became the Ger Tzedek, Avram ben Avram. And Avram ben Avram, may his merit be upon us. Hashem Yochum Domov, may his merit be upon us. His Yurtzeit is on Shavuos. And therefore his energy is arousing and bursting forth once again in the world during this time. And therefore it behooves us tremendously to think about such a great person, such a great tzaddik, the ger tzaddik, the great, great convert, the holy convert, who is deeply connected to Hashem and His Torah. And it should inspire us that sometimes we can give up certain luxuries because we want more Torah and we want to be connected to Hashem. And when Mashiach comes, we'll have all the luxuries and Hashem. But sometimes now as we're getting ready, we don't always have that. But we know that the number one thing, and there's nothing else, Hashem, all we want is you. And Kabbalah Satoira is making it clear that the, the penultimate goal is connection to God and connection to the Torah. And we should be zayich to this with Mashiach Tzidkeinu. Have a wonderful Shavuos in the merit of David HaMelech and the Baal Shem HaKodesh and the Ger Tzedek, Avram ben Avram, and bring that light to all of humanity. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful day, my dear friends. Hatzlocha Rabbah. Tomorrow we'll talk a little bit about dairy on Shavuos.